So basically, what we're going to do now is raise some walls. So we click on this foundation, go to the next tool, which is the Build Walls tool. Now, what you'll have noticed is the, the tools in the context sensitive toolbar have now changed. And the reason they've changed is as we progress through the modeling process, we make available to you predictively tools that we think that you're going to need as the next step in the process. For example, when you first bring the plans in, the logical thing you want is the scaling tool and the floor-based foundation tool. Once you've created the foundation, if I now click on the foundation itself, so by clicking on the plans, I see these tools. By clicking on the foundation, a new set of tools are made available to me. And these tools are predictive, um, trying to guess what it is that you're going to do next. So if I want to um, basically bring some walls up, I'll click on the foundation. I'll then go to the tool that says the Build Walls tool. Click on the Build, build Walls tool. And this allows a dialog box to then create walls. We can nominate both the height and the depth of these walls, either from manually typing a value in, this would be for three meter high walls, or alternatively by choosing a series of pre-built wall um, preset values. So let's just stick with our, say, 2400 millimeter high walls, and I'll press build. So you can see what the software has done for us now is to create a complete set of external perimeter walls around the outside of this building, or if you were indeed building a, a template of a single room, it would be the perimeter walls for that particular room. Now remember, at any point in the modeling process, if you get a little topsy-turvy, if you get turned upside down, if you get somewhat lost in the model and you can't see what you're doing, remember, all you need to do is press R on your computer keyboard for the main camera to return to the reset position. So that's R for reset. So far what we've discussed in our video training material is how do we bring a set of uh, plans, a set of either CAD drawings such as the ones that we're going to be building up in this um, sample model or a hand-drawn set of plans into our virtual decorator world. We've discussed using the um, base floor plan tool to here, bring those plans in and to use the base scale tool to scale those plans and then we've traced out the foundation on those plans using our floor base foundation tool. So once we had a foundation then we went through a process of clicking on the foundation making a new set of tools available to us. We selected the build walls tool and we built a set of perimeter walls for our structure here. Now you remember the value that I chose was 2400 millimeters high and 200 millimeters deep, which effectively produces a um, perimeter of our building for us. So what we want to go on to now is how do we um, insert internal walls inside this structure and how do we start to put our uh, flooring materials and, and, and um, objects and items into our scene. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to um, get rid of the floor base or the foundation that we constructed over the top of the plant so we can actually see what's going on on those plants. Now we're not going to delete the floor foundation, we're actually going to make it transparent. We're going to make it so that we can see through the floor base foundation and see the plans. And Users of the virtual decorator software would be familiar with it. This is functionality that we make available to all users. We can access that via the color tool here at the top left hand corner of the screen. So I know it's the color tool when I roll my mouse across it, it says color tool. And when I click on the color tool, I activate it. Now, the color tool can be used in two ways. If you use the color tool with the left hand mouse button held down, you access this pinwheel which applies an RGB color value to whatever surface you have selected when you have the left hand mouse button held down. So if we want it to be white, we drag the mouse pointer to the center of our pinwheel, red, blue, green, and so on. But we actually want to make a, a product transparent or a surface transparent. What we do is we use the right hand mouse button. And this brings up a, a gradient box and you can see here at the top left hand corner of the screen the material 
that we have selected with the mouse is fully solid or fully opaque. And at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, it's fully transparent or we can see straight through it. And obviously we can do that anywhere in between. So this is white solid down towards the left. Bottom corner is black. So this is darkness and this is transparency. So let's make it fully transparent. And now we can see through our foundation, we can see the underlying floor plan. So we haven't deleted the foundation, we've simply made it transparent for the purposes of constructing our visual model. And once we've made the floor base transparent, we can go through the process of um, creating the internal structure for our model. So the next tool we're going to go on to is called the wall building tool. Now we did use the wall building tool for the exterior of the walls where we simply traced a foundation and raised walls that followed that foundation. But the interior walls are generally a little trickier than that. So we're going to use the individual wall tool here. So the top right hand corner of the screen. So if I click on the wall tool, this is probably the wall building tool that most people would use once they've initially created a general foundation or general perimeter for their building. Most of the wall building from this point forward will be made using this wall building tool here. So let's basically show you how the wall building tool works. We click on the wall building tool. We then go down to where we want our wall to commence, where we want to start our wall building process and click once with the left hand mouse button and then drag along the line that we want the wall to follow. And when we get to the point where we want the wall to end, we simply let the mouse go and that creates the wall. It's a very simple process. So we can go through, let's build another wall, click on the wall building tool and click and drag along the line that we want the wall to be. So let's go up here, here's another wall here. I wanna put a wall along the segment. So I choose the wall building tool. I click where I want the wall to start. I drag the wall to the point where I want the wall to finish and I let it go. It's a very simple process of putting the walls in. Now, obviously that's a fairly manual process. One of the easier options in this uh, um, software is to build one wall and then go to our drawing tool. And the idea of the drawing tool is it allows us to build walls um, that extend from each other. And the drawing tool is this um, pencil or pen shaped tool up here in the top left hand corner of the screen. If I click on the draw tool and then click on the wall, you'll see these blue control points, which are represented in the icon as well. Uh, appear on the wall and what we can then do is extend this wall from these control points so you can see I can see I can extend that wall out drawing tool and draw onwards from the wall so by using the drawing tool I can extend any walls that are currently in place and I'll go through and I'll build the additional walls in my thing you can see there's a separate wall that comes across here the best way to come to grips with the wall building, the internal wall building tool is just to really take a set of plans and, and start practicing, start drawing out walls. Okay, so basically what we can see we've done here is we've gone through a portion of this building placing internal walls as we go. Now you will have noticed when we built any of these walls, let's just put another wall in that the wall building tool inserts a wall at a particular height and depth default value. The length of the wall is determined by how long we held the mouse button down, so where we start and where we drag the wall to. But the height and depth of the wall are preset, they're of a default value. So what we want to do is we want to be able to change these values at any time if they um, are reflected in our construction program. Now a um, typical internal wall would have a height um, that's variable and a depth that's variable. So we want to be able to get in there and change that. How do we do that? We click on the wall and we go to the options button. And down the options button, bottom left hand corner here, there's a series of tabs that allow us to get in here and, and, and change the detail of any object. We're going to repeatedly talk about the options button. And the main reason behind that is all of the tools as we go through this process, whether it's the banister building tool or the stair building tool or the wall building tool, will actually create an object of a, a default or standard value. 